Our topic for discussion today is cultivation method of safflower. Safflower, that is Cartemus tinctorius, is a highly branched herbaceous crystal like annual plant that belongs to the family Compositae. It is commercially cultivated for vegetable oil extracted from the seeds. Plants with globular flower heads having yellow, orange or red flowers. Each branch has one to five flower heads containing about 15 to 20 seeds per head. Safe flower comes under the beneficial flower because it provides numerous resources to the human beings. Safe flower was once used as less expensive replacement for saffron from which the name of this herbaceous annual is derived. More commonly, the seeds are pressed into oil that is used much like sunflower oil. Now let's come to origin. According to Dekender, probably safflower is a native of Arabia. However, Vavilov opined that the crop might have originated from India, Afghanistan, and Ethiopia. Safflower is one of the humanity's oldest crops. Chemical analysis of ancient Egyptian textiles dated to the 12th dynasty. Identified dyes made from safflower and garlands made from safflowers were found in the tomb of the pharaoh Tutankhamun. Now let's discuss about geographic distribution of safflower. Safflower cultivation is generally in less number throughout the world. India ranks first in terms of acreage, accounting for about 50% of the global total. Other significant producers were the United States, Mexico, and Argentina. Safflower is highly cultivated in Asian countries, especially in India. It is mainly grown in Maharashtra, Karnataka, and parts of Andhra Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Orisha, Bihar, etc. Maharashtra and Karnataka contributed about 55% and 31% of acreage and production respectively. Now let's come to economic importance of safflower. Flowers of safflower are occasionally used in cooking as a cheaper substitute for saffron. In coloring textiles, dried safflower flowers are used as a natural dye source for the orange red pigment core carthamin. It is used for alleviating diseases like hypertension, spondylitis, angina, arthritis, constipation, menstruation disorders, and hypercholesterolemia. It contains amino acids and minerals such as potassium, calcium, magnesium, and iron. Safflower can be grazed or stored as a hay or silage. The meal is used for animal feed, while that obtained from undecorticated seed is used for manure. Seeds contain about 32 to 40 percent oil, 11 to 17 percent protein, and 4 to 7 percent moisture. The oil contains about 1.5 percent myristic acid. 3% palmitic acid, 1% stearic acid, 0.5% archidic acid, 33% oleic acid, and 61% linoleic acid. Now let's come to the variety study on this safflower. For increasing the productivity of safflower crop, the improved varieties which are capable of giving high yields are Spiny variety like Nira, that is NRS209. Non-spiny variety like NRI6 and others like NRI NH1, that is PH6. Garima, Sarda, JSF73, MKH11, Manjira, A1, Bhima, N7, S144, T39, Malvia Kushum, a300, HUS 
305, Type 65, NP 30, TT 56, CO1, etc. are common varieties found in India. Now let's discuss about the soil and climatic requirements. Being drought resistant crop, safflower is cultivated on all types of soil including the sandy soils but the crop is best suited to deep well-drained fertile soils with high water holding capacity and neutral pH. The optimum temperature for germination is about 15.5 degrees Celsius. High temperature at the time of flowering are harmful to the crop. Day temperature in the range of 24 to 32 degrees Celsius at flowering is the best. Let's come to the cultural practices of safflower. First, let's see about the seed bed preparation. The crop requires a clot free seed bed with enough moisture for good germination and establishment. The soil is ploughed with marble ploughed after Karif crop harvest to bring to a fine tilt. As the seed is very small, the field is deeply ploughed, followed by two to three times harrowing or four to five times intercross ploughing with country plough. Let's see about the seed treatment methods. Seed should be treated with tiram, captain or carbendazim at the rate of three gram per kg seed before sowing to prevent losses from seed and soil borne diseases. Pre-soaking the seeds in pure water for 24 to 48 hours and set drying for about 4 hours is a beneficial practice. Thereafter, the seed should be treated with fungicides before sowing. Now let's come to the seed rate. The seed rate depends on the variety, the method of sowing and the cropping system adopted. Plant population of about 1 lakh plants per hectare is maintained for successful yield or good output. The seed rate is suggested for different cropping system or condition as number one as a mixed crop which requires about 8 to 15 kg per hectare number two as a pure crop which requires about 15 to 20 kg per hectare now let's come to sowing time safflower is shown in the month of october to november in early sowing crop may suffer from wilt or rust diseases in late sowing, however, there is attack of aphids. Let's come to the spacing requirement. A spacing of about 45 by 20 cm under rain-fed condition and 60 by 30 cm under irrigated condition is maintained for successful cultivation. Depth of sowing. Seeds can be shown behind the plow. The seed is placed at a depth of about 5 cm in the moist zone to facilitate good germination and emergence. The seed is covered by soil with heavy plank immediately. Now let's come to sowing method adopted for safflower. In the states like Maharashtra region, border method of planting is followed, that is by skipping one row after every two rows and opening a furrow in the skip rows. In Telangana region, tight ridges and furrow systems and closing the furrow every 10 meter helps in better soil moisture conservation and resulted in 26 percent higher seed yield than the normal method of planting of safflower. Now let's come to thinning. Thinning is the process of removing excess seedlings within 10 to 15 days after emergence and maintaining the desired plant to plant spacing is suggested for optimum plant population. This practice increases the seed yield by 15 to 30 percent under rain-fed conditions. This practice is very important to realize the potential yield but generally neglected by the farmers. Now let's see about how weed management has to be done for safflower. 
The crop should be kept wheat free till 45 days after sowing to obtain higher yield. The major wheat species are grasses, broadleaf wheat, and the sedges. Two weeding with hoeing three and six weeks after sowing are quite effective. Pre emergence application of atrazine at the rate of 0.75 kg per hectare can be successfully used for controlling the weeds. Fertilization Nitrogen at the rate of 60 kg per hectare in split doses, that is 30 kg at the time of planting and 30 kg after one month of planting, and 40 kg P2O5 and 20 kg K2O per hectare may be applied to the crop. Farmyard manure at the rate of 10 to 15 tons per hectare may be applied at the time of last plowing. Now let's see about the water management for safflower. Irrigating twice. First at elongation, that is 35 days after sowing, and second at flowering stage, that is 75 days after sowing, may be applied. In addition to a pre sowing irrigation, with its deep taproot capable of penetrating to a depth of 2 to 3 meters. It can draw moisture from deep in the subsoil from levels not available to a majority of the crops. The crop may use considerable amounts of soil moisture, but it cannot survive standing water for even a few hours in warm weather. Now let's see about the cropping system adopted for safflower. The common intercropping followed in different parts of the country are wheat with safflower, gram with safflower, linseed with safflower, coriander with safflower, etc. at different planting row ratios. Let's see about the disease management for safflower. The common diseases are alternaria leaf spot. This can be controlled by treating the seed with serum at the rate of 3 gram per kg seed, spraying Mancojep 75% WP at the rate of 2.5 gram per liter water is a need based treatment for the disease. The second disease is rust. For controlling this disease, spraying Mancojep at fortnightly interval is suggested. Use of resistant varieties like APRR1 and APRR3 is recommended. The third disease may be Ramularia leaf spot. This is controlled by treating the seed with agrosangian at the rate of 3 gram per kg seed. Appropriate crop rotation is also effective for avoiding this disease. Now coming to insect pest, wireworms, aphids, thrips, heliotis, safflower fly, safflower caterpillar, etc. are common insects which need to be monitored at budding and during flowering. Attacks of these insects at budding and flowering stage can cause significant yield losses. However, well-grown safflower is reported to be quite tolerant of damage to the insects. Spraying of metasystox 25EC at the rate of 1 litre in 1000 litre water per hectare or 0.1% femitone or 0.05% dimetoate would be able to control the insects. Safflower matures in 110 to 170 days. Flowers can be collected when it blooms from mid-summer onwards. Seed head can be cut off once plant is brittle. The head should be carefully thrashed or broken and open the seed head to collect the seed. Winnowing to separate 
cream colored seeds from the chaff is done. Harvest delays can occur when drying down to 8% moisture contained in the seed where stems have not dried down sufficiently. Now let's see the yield potential of safflower. Poor crop management under input starved condition is the most important reason for such low per hectare yields. Yields of 800 to 1200 kg per hectare may be achieved with improved production and protection technology. Exploitation of flowers of safflower as a source of pigment and for medicinal and nutritional uses may be the key interventions required to increase the popularity of this crop in the world and for restoring its status as an important oil seed crop. Safflower offers immense scope for further yield enhancement in countries like India. This is necessitated from the fact that the existing yield at the national level is much less than the demonstrated yield level. For India, the attainment of self-sufficiency in oil seed sector is possible if the production potential of our annual edible oil seed crops are harnessed through improved technologies and their timely transfer to the oil seed cultivators. Farming communities have to be motivated to explore every possibilities in enhancing yield labor for India to be a self-sufficient country in oil seeds.